I'm on my way to try to catch up with the Kokumbi dogs. For the past few months, they've taken refuge in their den with their new pups. But I've just found out the tiny pack are finally on the move. And Henry was the first person to spot them. I was driving very early in the morning and I just saw, you know, number of dogs on the road with puppies. I was like, this is Kakumbi, it's definitely Kakumbi. And this is the first time we're seeing them away from the dead. And the pups have got nowhere to go, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Exactly. I've been rooting for this pack ever since I first saw them. But this is by far the most dangerous time for these dogs. I'm Jules Bradford. I'm a wildlife filmmaker and I love African wild dogs. This is epic. Last year, I got to know some special dogs here in Zambia's South Luangwa National Park. Now I'm back to see how they're doing. Mate, I've missed you. It's the end of the denning season. The packs have brand new pups. And the pups I met last time are yearlings. They have to step up and protect the family. No easy task when their arch enemies, lions, are piling on the pressure. I'm going to be following the fortunes of two very different packs. The mighty Manzi and the fearless Kukumbi dogs as they face their toughest challenges head on. We're headed back to where Henry spotted the Kukumbi pack, just off the main road. It's a reasonable distance from, from the den to here. If they only left this morning, it does show that these puppies have done quite a lot of growing around. I was also they? shocked, so. Yeah. It's gonna be a tough uh, few weeks or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Henry works for the Zambian Carnival Program. He's been monitoring the Kokumbi pack. Yeah, in front of us. There's the puppies. Yes, mate. This is so cool. The start of a new adventure. When pups are about to be born, Wild dogs find a den to keep them safe until they're big enough to travel around with the pack. Once they leave the den, the pups are exposed to far more danger. The adults need to protect them, but they also have to go hunting. For the Kokumbi pack, that's especially hard because there are only three adults, Mama Mai and two males looking after five pups. What do you think the main dangers are to this pack now, mate? This area is potential danger for, for snares, and God forbid if the adult female gets caught, it will be disastrous. The puppies, you know, they're still young, they can't keep up with the adults, and when they're hunting, they're left behind a lion or a hyena. They could grab one of them or, or a leopard. Or a leopard. Mm -hmm. This is the most dangerous time of their lives. The Kokombi pack live just outside the national park and poacher snares are more common. The snares, we, we have to, you know, keep an eye on, on them. You check for snares as often as you possibly can, but for this pack, it's especially important because with only three adults, the chance of them raising all five of these puppies are against the odds as it is. Yes. If they lose one adult, game over? Yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely game over, you know, it will be very difficult for them to defend the pups, not to mention of finding the food. This pack has been secretive and at the den for so long. And now finally to see them on the move like this is just amazing. It's the start of a whole new adventure for them. Out here, in the open like this, anything could happen. We know there's lion around, we know there's hyenas. So these pups are in real danger and it's gonna take the adults' best effort to make sure that they all make it through. The next few days could mean life or death for these guys. The other dog pack I'm following faced different pressures when they left their den. The Manzi are a super pack of almost 30 dogs. They have safety in numbers, but they're based inside the National Park 
and face huge pressure from an increasing number of lions in their territory. They've been moving around a lot over the last few weeks, making it difficult for me to keep tabs on them. I'm heading back to where I last saw the Manza, with my friend and park scout, Simon Chuna. One of the best ways of picking up on the trail of wild dogs is by reading the behaviour of other animals. Jules, stop. You see the behaviour of that impala? Dogs usually hunt early morning. Something spooked these impala. But nothing's chasing them. How's that for an African scene, eh? We've got elephants here, giraffe feeding in the background. All we need now is dogs. All right. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. You're okay. You're okay. That's it. Keep going. Go on. Good, good. That's about as close as you want a, an elephant to get, for sure. She wanted to feed on this palm tree. It's just growing here. It's beautiful being surrounded by, by elephants. But these teenagers, you've got to watch because um, they're just kind of like human teenagers are learning what their strengths and weaknesses are. And if they decide to test their strength on you, then you know, you're going to be worse off, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, let's move away a little bit. We were here first, but um, they've got right of way, so. There's plenty of activity this morning, but no sign of the Manzi yet. Oi, male lion. Uh-oh. That's not good. It's really not good. There's no one behind, is it male lion? It's so male. Oh, two males, okay. Two lions is not good. The Manzi really are having it tough this year. Oh. Lions, man. They make life so hard for these dogs. Jules. Right. Eagle-eyed Simon has spotted something. Is there something in front? Yeah. Let's go have a look. Dogs in front. We've got dogs in front of us here. <sighs> I thought we, they might be miles away by now with those lions here. Just the whole park. That's the whole pack. Great. Good news. I'm relieved to find the Manzi intact. But the close proximity of those two lions is a serious concern. The lions that we saw are within 300 metres here. So hopefully the pack doesn't make too much noise playing. It's possible that those lions could come and try and investigate. Wild dogs are a fugitive species. They spend their lives in the cracks and on the move, always having to keep one step ahead of the lions. These dogs seem pretty chill, so may well be unaware of the danger that's close by. The pack does look like they're starting to hunt now. A few adults just starting to range off. Always interesting to see who goes. Does look like one couple of the yearlings here. There we go. And there's Snowy, stepping up with the older dogs. I'm going to follow the adults and see if we can see how the pack hunts. It's actually a really dangerous time for these dogs because as they're 
poking their noses out here looking for prey in ones and twos, they could at any point encounter lions. Fortunately, the dogs have set off in the opposite direction to those two male lions. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we've got some dogs hunting in front of us. They're coming through here on the tracks of something. Ah, oh, man, we're not going to get through there fast enough. To keep up with the dogs, I'm pushing Roxanne, oh. my trusty off-roader, through some unforgiving terrain. This is awful. Horrible, horrible. This is the real and mostly unshown side of wild dogs hunting. Because right now, Ross in the back, holding the camera, is just getting thrown around like a rag doll. <laughs> I can, I can see the flat ground. Oh, thank goodness. Chasing, chasing, chasing. They are moving. There must be something in front of them. Even though we're back on solid ground, the dogs are moving too fast for us. Okay, we've lost them. Oh. It looks like I'm not the only one trying to keep up with them. This this hyena knows where the dogs are. For sure. For sure. They don't set off like that unless they know. Hyenas are blessed with incredible hearing. And we're going to use that to our advantage. They know where there's dogs, there's food. Well, we'll just follow at a bit of a distance. Right, the hyenas led us straight to the dogs. So, move up. Yeah, there we go, oh, immediately. The hyena's in trouble. Look, here's a dog, chase him, chase him, to the right. Okay, they've got him. <laughs> On its own, it's no match for the mighty monster. She's getting scrapped here, totally scrapped. Oh, it's a proper fight. You see heaps of dust. Heaps of dust. Man. Completely obliterated by the dogs. That was pretty serious, that. She took a beating, but hyenas are tough, tough animals. They've got thick skin, uh, incredibly high pain tolerance, and um, they're just powerful animals. Really, really respected them. Dogs only pick a fight if it's worth it. They must have a fresh kill somewhere in the bush. I think somewhere in here they've been successful. Got some vultures here. It's like a tantalizing glimpse through this Mapani scrub. Try and find a half decent way in. The Mopani trees in this part of the park make life really tough for us. Mopani thickets do hold lots of prey. Dogs are very successful in here. This is kind of where these dogs love to be. You got any dogs here, Simon? I can't see them. I can't see them. No sign. Whatever those dogs have got, they're so well hidden, I can't get a good view. It's frustrating to miss the hunt, but not that frustrating, honestly. I, I hate it when I make a huge mistake and then I you know, miss the dogs because I've made the wrong call. But if I miss the dogs because I can't follow them through the terrain, I mean, that's nothing you can do about that. You win some, you lose some. It's a tough job following these dogs, for both man and machine. The chase has left Roxanne in need of some TLC. 
so I'm taking the old girl in for some repairs. Hey, Prince. Hi, Jess. How's it going, mate? Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks, but... How was the drive? Yeah, it's good, but I'm limping a little bit. Oh, what happened? I broke a shock, mate. It's just the top here, you see? Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh. So uh, maybe you guys can put another one in for me. Yeah, sure, no problem. We'd okay. love to help. Great, man. All right, awesome. Thanks, bro. You're only as good as your vehicle out in the bush, and basically your vehicle's only as good as your mechanics. So anytime something goes wrong with the, with the vehicle, whether it's filming or whether it's ZCP with their conservation work, they rely on guys like Prince to take care of it. An hour later, Roxanne's good to go. And since I'm in the neighborhood, I've arranged to meet up with Tandi Mwitwa at ZCP's headquarters. Tandi, Molly Banji. Yeah, Mo. How are you? Good, thanks. Nice to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Should we find some lions? Yes. All right. Ready, ready. Perfect. <laughs> ah. Awesome. <laughs> Tandi is ZCP's lion specialist, and I'm eager to pick her brains. I've encountered lions almost every time I've searched for the Manzi pack this season. I want to know just how many prides are in Manzi territory. Tandi's brought her telemetry kit to help locate one of the prides. So which pride have we got here, Tandi? So this is a pride that we call a big pride. It's been in this area since 2008. Oh, so we've got a long history. We named them because when they first moved into the area, it was nearly 30 lions total. <laughs> it was a massive group. But over the years, different factions have broken off and currently this core group is about six or seven lionesses and there's usually two males with them. She looks like she's got a wound or something. What would cause that? Hunting potentially or even fighting with other lions could easily be like, you know, just a little bit of a poke with a buffalo horn. A little <laughs> bit of a poke with a buffalo horn? That sounds more serious to me. <laughs> it is, it can actually be life-threatening wow. or fatal for these guys. Although it's a small pride, it's, it's really quite a big threat to a pack like the Manzi. Yeah, this one and their offshoots. There's about eight prides within just the area that the dogs cover. And that's not counting, you know, any nomadic males passing through. The dogs have to be smart. If this area becomes too active in terms of lions and they have to book it out of there, I think that's what happened the past couple of weeks. What is it about dogs that makes lions want to kill them all the time? I think they recognize them as direct competitors for resources. Nature is brutal for everybody. There are very few species that have it easy, even, you know, the supposed king of the jungle. It's rough. It'd be easy to think of the lions as villains, but they're not. They're just actually doing the best by their own young, aren't they, mm -hmm. to try and reduce the competition mm -hmm. for food. Yeah, it's a tough life for both. Life on the run, eh? Mm. It's making it Difficult for me, that's for sure. <laughs> Everywhere I go, all I find is lions and no dogs. Yeah, yeah. I'm beginning to understand what a massive threat the Manzi pack are facing this season. Tandi has also got me thinking about Kukumbi pack again. The dogs are extremely vulnerable now that they've left their den. True, there are fewer lions where they are, but there are plenty of other predators that could take out one of the pups, not to mention poachers' snares. If they haven't encountered any threats, they should still be in the same area I last saw them. I said something. Was it a warthog? Or was it a wild dog? No, nope, it's wild dogs. Got him. Wild dogs and the puppies. <laughs> K 
Combi seem to be relishing their newfound freedom. And they're all accounted for. Well, you got everybody here, it's all good. This is actually the first time I'm getting a good clock of the pack together. They've been at the den for so long. And these pups are beginning to learn there's a whole new world out here. This could well be their first encounter with a vulture away from the den. This is a rite of passage for most wild dog pups. You see just how nervous they are about it. To see them coming out like that is a sign to me that they are starting to learn that their, their world is bigger than just the den. I'm sure they're a little bit confused as to why they've been brought away from the den like this, but this is just what the pack has to do. Ultimately, they have to leave the safety and security of the den to range out to find better feeding opportunities. They've got so much learning and growing to do. Got to work out what's a fun, what's a toy, What's a threat? It's going to be a steep learning curve. And it's down to mum, Amai, and the two adult males to help keep them out of trouble. You can see just how nervous these adults are. They're on edge. <coughs> hmm? Alarm call. The pups are oblivious to any dangers. But when they hear one of the adults' alarm call, they know to be wary. Water males like this are pretty serious. You can see the size of these tusks. They do serious damage. The adults are clocking every move the warthog makes. The level of confidence from this big boar is pretty incredible. The warthog is standing its ground. If the pack was bigger, the dogs may well give chase but they have a lot to lose here. Adults are probably making a decision about whether this is too risky or not. The worst thing that could happen right now is for one of these adults to be injured. If that were to happen, the pack would be unlikely to survive. Two adults would not be enough to raise these pups. The warthog is getting too close for comfort. That little one doesn't want to be the first in line. No one wants to be the front one. First in line to take a warthog tusk. The warthog doesn't look particularly threatening, but for some reason it seems determined to graze closer and closer to the pups. Decided enough is enough. It didn't take much to chase that water off. The confrontation only lasted a few seconds. But even so, one of the male dogs got a small wound from the warthog's tusk. It just goes to show they were right to be cautious. I have to say, I, I had faith in these three dogs and their ability to keep these pups okay but it's always nice to have that faith justified. These three dogs, the Kokombi Trio, have really, really earned my respect. They are an extraordinary pack of dogs. To be raising five pups on their own is no mean feat. And there's not many packs that could do it. Now, the important thing is that all three of these dogs stay out of trouble just do what they've been doing, which is to be hunting well, defending these pups well, and if they can do that, these pups will make it.